Heaven Officials Blessing, Chapter 151. Audio Source, WuxiaWorldAudioBook.com. Panic left and right, east or west undecided. Really? How can you tell? Xie Lian asked. Hua Cheng was about to speak when Pei Su, whose speech was broken, extended his trembling finger and started writing on the ground. Out of some unknown respect the group gathered to watch him, and crookedly, the words, battle formation, were formed under his finger. Once he was done writing, it was like he had used up the last bit of his energy, clenched his hand into a fist, and stopped moving. Hua Cheng raised his head. This is it exactly. The protection steed of the Rain Master is a black ox transformed from the Golden Beast on the knocker to the gates of the Royal Cultivation Hall of the Yushi Kingdom. Usually when it walked it wouldn't leave traces but once it enters battle, it would change form. So, this hoof mark is different than the shapes of normal hoof marks. It's much bigger. Lord Ghost King is shockingly well informed, Pei Ming commented. Hua Cheng pointed at the marks on the ground and continued to speak to Xie Lian. Gurgur, look here. Xie Lian moved his head closer. Yes, you're right. This hoof mark appeared very suddenly, so it must have also been very sudden when they ran into the enemy. Yes, Hua Cheng said. And this hoof mark is deep, so it's obvious the enemy wasn't weak. That ox fought the enemy here with its horns, and was pressed deep into the earth for more than two inches. The two were simulating the fight scene that had just passed, and Pei Ming also didn't back down. But in the end, both sides ended in a tie. That's right, Xie Lian agreed. There was no trace of blood around nor dispersing essences of evil. So it appeared, when they ran into each other, they matched on quick and hard, but once they found each other a pain to deal with, they both abandoned the fight. Hua Cheng informed them that the creature in the east had changed its direction, and the group continued on westward, but now their pace slowed. Soon, a giant, peculiar building appeared on the side of the road. Looking from afar, it was more impressive than all the other houses around, and even though some of its enclosures and eaves were collapsed, it still assumed a presence of awe. Xie Lian unconsciously stopped in his step. What is this place? Hua Cheng only gave it a glance and answered. Divine Temple of Wu Yang. Pei Ming had one of Pei Su's arm hooked over his shoulders to drag him along. And how does Hua Cheng Zhu know it's a divine temple? because it's written on it, Hua Cheng said. Hearing this the group looked up. On the surface of the stone beam before the gates of this building, indeed there were engraved a row of giant characters. All drew worn through the ages, and there were some strange scratch marks, but they were still considerably clear. However, after some silence, Xie Lian said, There's certainly writing, but... But he couldn't understand this writing at all. He had never imagined that not even something like this could trip up Hua Cheng. He turned to Xie Lian. The gist of the meaning to that row of words is eminent crown prince descends with light to shine everlasting unto the land of Wu Yang, and such nonsensical praises. Gurgur look, the last couple of characters at the end there, don't they resemble Wu and Yang? When he heard, eminent crown prince. Xie Lian's expression twitched unnoticeably. And when he looked closer, sure enough although that row of characters looked like the drawings of children, all circles and curves mixed with many odd symbols, but the words, Wu Yang, were in shapes and strokes he was familiar with, like they were just derivative writing. Hua Cheng Zhu can actually read and interpret the lost writing of an ancient kingdom, I am truly in awe, Pei Ming said. Hua Cheng cocked an eyebrow and smiled fakely. I've stayed in Mount Tong Lu for ten years. Much can already be done in a month. If I can't even interpret some words after ten years, then what am I doing on this earth, am I right? Not even the top ten literature gods in the upper heavens might dare proclaim such words, and as a martial god, what could Pei Ming do? So he could only smile fakely too. Perhaps... Xie Lian puffed a breath lightly. Thank goodness San Lang is here. I can only maybe translate some rough Wu Yang words, Hua Cheng said. If we run into more difficult ones then I'll need to ask Gurgur to help evaluate together. 
Xie Lian sweated. Um, I'm sure I'm not as good as San Lelang in this. But the god worshipped by Wu Yang, is it also their crown prince? Hua Cheng hugged his arms. I think so, yes. Xie Lian frowned to think. If my master knew of the crown prince of Wu Yang, then he must also know if he ascended. So why did he tell me that that crown prince died? Single quote quote dot. There are three possibilities, Hua Cheng said. First, he didn't actually know. Second, he's lying. Third, he didn't lie, and the crown prince of Wu Yang really did die, but it wasn't a typical death. If the emperor was here then perhaps we could have asked if he knew of this kingdom, if he knew such a person, Pei Ming said. However, Hua Cheng said, maybe not. The Wu Yang kingdom disappeared over 2,000 years ago. In comparison, Jun Wu is only a youngin. They're of completely different dynasties. Jun Wu ascended around 1,500 years ago, and was a famed general of a warring era, who later proclaimed himself king and successfully became an immortal after ruling for some time. As the number one martial god who ruled for a thousand years, his background was already completely out in the open. As for the dynasties, Hua Cheng spoke of, he was referring to the dynasties of the heavens. Currently, Jun Wu was the ruler, and hundreds of heavenly officials formed the upper court, making the current dynasty and the government before them belong to a different dynasty. Just as how regimes change in the mortal realm, the heaven realm would also go through dynasty changes. Although the time it'd take would be very, very long, but fundamentally they're the same. New worshippers would replace the old, and new gods would replace the old ones. Sometimes, the decline of a god wasn't caused by any mistakes he might have done and was banished as a result. But because another, more powerful god had appeared, for no other reason than because people's lives and beliefs gradually changed and no longer need him. For example, a heavenly official who controlled horses must dwell very well because people couldn't leave their horses and carriages alone when they were in need of transportation. Who wouldn't want their horses to be strong and healthy, their travel safe? Thus, his donations would never cease. However, if one day mortals discovered something completely new that ran faster than horses, then when this new invention overtook horses, worshippers of this heavenly official who controlled horses would inevitably decrease. Such heavenly officials who flash by like shooting stars make up the majority of the heavens. This way of decline was the cruelest because the process could not be turned around. Unless that heavenly official jumped down from the heavens and returned to being mortal to recultivate a new path, to become a brand new god and ascend, then he would be destined to watch his own decline until he disappeared. However, not everyone possessed the courage and fortune. The gods of the previous dynasty were said to have faded thus. And some also said it was because they caused a great calamity, fought a chaotic battle, which was why they all fell from grace at the same time. But, it couldn't be proven, and it wasn't important anymore. Since, a few centuries later, John Wu was born, and created a new heavenly dynasty. Also, following right after him, a great number of heavenly officials of the new age ascended incessantly, filling the gaps for the worshippers, and gradually formed the stable upper court of today. Which meant, unless there were heavenly officials older than the 1,500-year-old John Wu, there was no one who could know of how the god worshipped in the Wu Yang kingdom was silently wiped of all traces. The group of them crossed over the mostly collapsed enclosure and entered the dark great hall. It only took a few steps for Xie Lian to notice something amiss. He had thought the great hall was dark on the inside because the interior hadn't seen light for years, the windows all shut. Yet, after looking around, the more he looked the more he found things peculiar. He walked next to the wall, his fingers brushing lightly across, and when he brought them before his eyes, he blurted. This is... Black watching said. It wasn't that the light was dim, it was that the walls of this immense divine hall were all black. As far as I know, almost all the divine temples in Mount Tong Lu are like this, watching said. It was a chilling sight. 
Why would the walls of divine temples be painted in the color as black as hell? Just seeing the color makes one anxious, so how could anyone worship the divine with a sincere heart in this state? All like this? Pei Ming wondered. Rotten away from neglect perhaps? The houses we passed by earlier were black like this, Xie Lian said. Technically, those houses would have been the same in age. As he spoke, he continued to feel and lightly explored the walls of this divine temple. Not only were the walls chillingly black, they were also rugged, like the ruined face of a woman that was covered with scars, and it was also exceedingly solid. Something clicked in Xie Lian's mind. This divine temple was burned by fire before. How can you tell? Pei Ming asked. Xie Lian turned around. The walls of this divine temple should have been covered with murals before, painted with a special paint, a very heavy layer. After fires have burnt them, they would turn black, and parts would melt and change shape. After solidifying, they would feel rugged and hard like this. Your Highness certainly knows a lot, I might as well be in awe of you too, Pei Ming said. Xie Lian rubbed his forehead and lightly cleared his throat. This isn't anything to be in awe of. I only know, because in the past, after many of my crown prince palaces were burnt, they'd end up like this. Hearing this the crowd fell silent. Xie Lian suddenly remembered another thing. And that stone beam outside. There were many scratch marks on those engraved praises on the stone beam, and it didn't look like regular wares and tears, so it must have been people who were slashing at it with blades. Pei Ming frowned. Why would they do that? Hua Cheng replied coldly. Because they don't agree with the words. That's right, Xie Lian said. It's the same as breaking an establishment plaque. Ban Yu was slightly taken aback. So, this divine temple was burnt down by the people of Wu Yang themselves. After some silence, Xie Lian was about to speak when Pei Ming suddenly said, What's the meaning of this? Xie Lian turned his head to see, and saw Pei Ming raising his left arm, a scorpion-tailed snake biting deeply into his left hand, and its tail was swinging, trying to sting him. Ban Yu was ready to kneel again. I'm sorry, I've snakes all over my body. Xie Lian didn't know whether to laugh to cry and held her up. Ban Yu, don't get into the habit of kneeling to apologize. General Pei, how did you get yourself bitten by her snake? Pei Ming raised his hand, his expression dark. How should I know? I was only putting my arms around her and it, it became like this. Xie Lian asked patiently. Then, General Pei, what were you doing putting your arm around her shoulders? It was only then that Pei Ming seemed to notice and started to contemplate this question. A moment later, he answered. A habit. In a dark, creepy place like this, isn't it normal to hold women in your arms to comfort them and calm their fears? I'm sorry, but I wasn't scared, Ben Yu said. Xie Lian understood. This was nothing more than a tragedy inflicted by Pei Ming himself whose hands were itching unconsciously. Pei Ming finally yanked off that scorpion-tailed snake, and his left hand was already greatly swollen. Give me the antidote, quick. I'm sorry, all the Shanyue ferns on me are used up, Ben Yu said. It's all right, Xie Lian said. General Pei, you're a heavenly official. The swelling will go down in a jiffy. Then he turned around and continued to examine the walls. Suddenly, his eyes swept a blackened area, and he instantly froze. Everyone, come see, he called. There's still a face here on this wall. MXTX Authors Notes I've never studied the chemical components of mural paints, and I've never researched what they'd be like after being burnt. Everyone, please just take those mural paints as some sort of mysterious, unique mixture. End chapter